button. I question. And I will say good morning, ladies and gentlemen at Cathedral Elementary School in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, I'm Randy Bretz, and I'm thrilled to be with you today. Today, we will have a conversation with a city councilwoman, Tammy Ward, and she represents the uh, city of Lincoln and a variety of things. So let me tell you a little bit about what they do or who they are. Here are the names of the city council representatives for the city of Lincoln. James Michael Bowers, Roy Christensen, Richard McGinnis, Jane Raybold, Benny Schaub, Tammy Ward, and Sandra Washington. And let me tell you a little bit about what they do. They appoint people to commissions and boards. They handle land use and zoning changes. They work on redevelopment and financing bonds, the city budget, the city code, fees, rates, and taxes, and a forum for our citizens. So I'm gonna turn it over now and tell you about this woman that you see on your screen. Tammy Ward. She is a city councilwoman for part of the city of Lincoln. She grew up on a farm out in Geneva, Nebraska, and she lives here in Lincoln, and she's been here for quite a few years. She came here to go to the University of Nebraska, and she stayed, and it's a great place to live. Now, get this. This is when I got to know her. She worked with Governor Nelson, and then when Mr. Nelson became a, a senator in the United States Senate, she worked for him, and she worked for two uh, state senators. She's been on the city council since 2019. And she has a consulting uh, business and still manages, helps manage the farm. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you Councilwoman Tammy Ward and I hope you have some great questions for her today. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here classmates and Randy and it's a beautiful day. The sun is back just in time for the weekend. So thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So I, I want to make sure and answer your questions and, and keep it very interactive and, and hopefully we'll all learn a lot from each other today. So um, with that, Randy, I'm happy to, to launch into the questions or talk a little bit about any subjects that you have in mind. Um, I remember sixth grade very well. It's been a very long time ago, but I'm just thrilled to be with all of you today. So thank you all for this opportunity and, and to your teacher and to um, Tara Norris with Junior Achievement. It's just such a great time to be together. And so please feel free to ask. I know Randy has some issues in mind he thought we could talk about. Yep, and, and the so kit and each student created a question. Okay. I mean, I told them we might not get to all of them, okay. but. Well, good. Well, we can launch into that if you would like. Okay, and I'm gonna have them ask from their desk, but if you can't hear them, then I will, um, okay. then I'll just relay the question, okay? Perfect. That Perfect. works. Yeah, can you hear me okay? I, can you hear her okay? Anyone wanna start? Okay, Colton is gonna go. Okay. And, uh, Pull your mask down too. How long have you been on the city council? You know, I got elected in May of 2019. So it'll be two years this next month. And um, right after I got elected, it seems shortly after that, we went into um, some very big issues starting with COVID last year and um, the civil unrest in our community with Black Lives Matter. So we've been real busy for the last two years. So I'm halfway through my first term of four years. Oh, there I can really see you. <laughs> Thank you, Colton. That was a great question. Great question. Okay, anyone or I'll call on somebody. All right, Maria, stand up, please. Um, how is it different being on city council during COVID than being on city council? Would you mind repeating that, Ms. Wisdom? Yes. She I wants to know how how is it different being on city council during COVID versus being on city council in a normal day-to-day -day routine? Thank you. That's a really great question. I'm really glad you asked it. So for the first six months, almost a year on council, I was able to come to your school, for example, this morning, and, and now we're using Zoom. Um, so that's one major difference. Um, we immediately 
events, as you know, like with school, were canceled. And then about after a month of COVID, we started doing Zoom appearances like we're doing right now. And so um, that was hard for everyone, but we, we all adjusted. In terms of our own council meetings, those were, um, we kept coming as council members to city hall where we have our meetings and we meet every Monday of the month, every Monday. And so we did have a period of time where we held meetings by Zoom for the public, but that was only a couple of meetings. But we decided as a council to keep coming, but to try to protect the public as best as we could. So we all um, wore masks and we, we sat far apart at our meeting as far as we could in our chambers. And then we only allowed people in that could also social distance within the city council chambers. And so we tried to keep everybody safe. We could not require people to wear masks in a government building. Most people did, but a lot of people did not. So it immediately changed for the city council when COVID hit. And then of course, we have been dealing with the mask mandate um, and the emergency measures and worked with the mayor and the department of health. And not everybody feels the same about masks, as we all know. Um, so it's changed a lot and it's been our major focus um, the last year, of course. So it's, it's been very challenging, but our, the majority of the council has supported the directive health measures that our mayor and our uh, director of health, the health department has put in place. That's not to say that people that come before the council have supported what we have tried to do to keep to keep you all safe and your families. So it's been a challenge. So it's been very different with COVID, but I think we're climbing our way out and we can talk about that if we get time or if someone else has questions, but I want, want to keep um, the floor open so we can get to your other questions. Thank you for asking that. Kendall, are you ready? Okay, Kendall is gonna ask one loud and clear. How do you get on the city council? Kendall, thank you for asking that. You have to run for office, you have to campaign. So I, um, in the fall of 2019, when I decided to run for city council, I had to run a campaign. And there were initially five people running for the office that I have for Northwest Lincoln. And so we, um, we meaning my campaign team, had quite a race on our hands for for the whole time. And so we had a primary election just like Lincoln had this week. And um, we got down to two people and I, I um, was lucky enough to win that primary election. So you, I'm in that campaign and then came through at the general election. So I represent Northwest Lincoln, which includes all of downtown, um, clear out to the airport. And um, it's, a, it's a very um, challenged district in terms of economics and, and part of par poverty. Um, I have a high population of poverty in my district, but I'm digressing. So you have to run, but once you get on as a district representative, you really do then uh, respond as a, a council person for the entire city of Lincoln. So you have to campaign, just like the president of the United States or anyone else, only for, for city office. Thank you for asking that. Anyone want to go or take someone? Okay, Katerina is going to go next. <laughs> Bless you. Are you Republican or Democrat and why? Well, well, you know what? I love that name, first of all, Katerina. Katerina. I am Katerina. I love that. Um, I'm a Democrat, and this is why I grew up in a farm family, as Randy mentioned. My entire family was Republican. And we always had to watch the president's speech on TV when I was a young child. And so I decided, um, which was great. And um, my great grandfather was a Nebraska state senator. I was telling Randy and others and Tara and your teacher, Julie, before um, you got on. Anyway, so it was really important to my parents. But I didn't know really too much about the parties until I, I turned 18. But I decided to revolt. And when, when I registered to vote, I just registered as a Democrat to be different. 
and then it kind of stuck with my value system as I grew um, through college and um, never switched. My family still kind of gives me a bad time, but um, we, uh, we kind of set politics aside at, at family meal, at family holidays. So that's why I registered to be different. And then the, val the value system is something I really appreciate most of the time. But I really think that we need to be bipartisan and try to, especially right now, come together and heal as a country and as a community. So thank you for asking. Volunteer, Russell. How about Olivia? Olivia is gonna ask one. Okay. You what pull is, your mask down so she can hear you. What is your plan for getting a new source of water for London? Was that? Uh, Randy had asked, or Randy, I think, had mentioned to us about new sources of water. Yeah. And she's asking about that. How well, we're going to do that. That's a really important question. And that is actually part of the climate action plan that we just passed in um, tandem with the mayor of Lincoln, who has rolled out a new climate action plan. And so we're looking at how to fund that right now. And it's really important from my point of view, because after the floods of three years ago, before this council was um, seated, we had floods in this city, as you all know, and we were really fortunate that, it, that we were able to do what we did to prevent further flooding. But we, we desperately need, from my point of view, the second source of water. So we're looking at a couple of options in our climate action plan. And it's not cheap, it's several million dollars. And um, because our city plans so well, long before my time, we have a lot of that money set aside, but we still have to budget and figure out how to pay for a second source of water in case we have another severe flooding situation in the future. Great question. Jacob, you want to ask? Hey, Jacob's going to go. What jobs did you have to do when you worked for Senator Nelson? So thank you, Jacob. Um, when I worked in the governor's office, when he was the governor, I was on his executive staff. I, my office was about, it was about the size of a closet, but it was about six feet away from his office. And there was a door that separated me from the governor. And I helped him do all his appointments to the state boards and commissions. So that meant if you wanted to be on, let's say, the Environmental Trust, which is a big board in Nebraska, the applic I sorted through all those applications that came in to the governor. Sometimes there were 40 or 50 people that wanted one appointment that he would make. So I would vet, I would um, just screen all those applications for the governor. So I was his boards and commissions um, person, staff person. And there were so many boards and commissions and there still are for the state of Nebraska. So I would screen those for him and make recommendations for him to consider. And he actually did go through those final um, recommendations and he would select people to go on those boards and commissions. And so I, it was kind of, it was, it, for me, it felt like a really big um, job because if I messed up and um, we put people on that didn't, um, shouldn't be serving, that could be a big thing. And so I was really thrilled to be able to do that for him. And um, then when he took about two years off and um, went into, practice law again after his term was up as governor, then he decided, as Randy mentioned, uh, to uh, become a United States Senator, then he campaigned really hard. And by then I was working in the Lincoln mayor's office for Don Wesley. And I had worked for Mayor Wesley when he was a state Senator. And then uh, Governor Nelson called me to see if I'd get on the campaign trail with him and help him run for the United States Senate. And so I did do that after that and he got elected. And so I went to work for him in his Lincoln Senate office and managed his United States Senate office in Lincoln and did all his appearances for him here because he was in Washington most of the time. And then when he come back from Washington on the weekends, I would often travel the state with him as would other staff and visit schools like yours and work with him then. 
So that's the kind of things I did with him, even when he was out of the governor's office. So I've been really lucky. I've had a career in government and I, and I love public service. It's one of the reasons I ran for city council. Didn't know we'd have COVID, but you know, <laughs> Um, here we are, but we're, yep, we're here we are. <laughs> here we are, masked up and on Zoom. Yep. yep. Anyone want to volunteer? I'll call on Bronson, what are you? This is Bronson. Pull your mask down. <laughs> Hello. Why did you choose to be a, on city council? I, you know, it was the timing. A lot of it was timing. Um, I met a was at a point in life a couple of years ago where my business was going well and I'm self-employed. My um, parents had been ill but had passed away and um, I had devoted a lot of time to their care and uh, as sad as I was that they were gone, it was also a time where um, I had more time to devote to public life again and I love public service and um, it just the timing was right for me to step forward. A friend of mine and predecessor, Carl Eskridge, was serving in this position before and he decided not to run. And he talked to me about running and some other people did. And I, one of the first calls I made was to my former boss, Ben Nelson. And um, I told him all the reasons I don't think I should run. And he said, those are the reasons you should consider running. And so I got a lot of advice from my friends and talked to my family. Um, and it was just, the, the timing was really good. And and I felt just compelled to step in. Didn't know if I would win, but I was fortunate to, to run and win. Kind of in your blood. And I would con just encourage all of you, if you have any desire at all to, to get involved on some level, um, but we can talk about that if we have time. But um, just to step up and, and do any community type of volunteer work. I'm sure Randy's talked to you about that many times. So that's why I ran. Okay. Lauren is going to go. Okay, Lauren. Once you get on the city council, how long are you on it? So um, very good question. Thank you, Lauren. It's a four-year term. So my term is halfway done, about two years. So I'll need to decide um, probably sometime next year whether to run again. You have to run every four years. So um, four year terms at a time. And you have to run no matter if you've served once or not. Um, it's not automatic. And it's like we're going through the city election process right now, as you, as I'm sure you're probably aware. It will come up again. All right, Lainey is going to go. Hi, Lainey. Um, how is the council improving city streets after the winter? Was that improving city streets after the? Yeah, how are they improving city streets after the winter time with all like the potholes and things like that? Got it. Thank you. Um, so the city crews are already out filling the potholes. Even um, I, in March they started. Um, we had a a historic winter, as you know, and so they sent crews out, I think, earlier than ever. And um, so they're out there filling potholes now. If you see potholes or your family sees potholes, there's an app called Uplink um, that you can download on your phones or your parents can. And please let us know because the effort is, I think, stronger than it's been in a long time because of the winter we had to fill those potholes and it's not easy. And, and I know it's hard on cars and I hear about it a lot. So we're out where the people that do the hard work are out there now trying to keep up as best we can because it is hard on vehicles. It's hard on our streets and um, we have the budget for it right now. So let us know let, if your parents can let us know, call me, <laughs> we'll get on it. Peter, you want to go? This is Peter. Okay. Pull your mask down so they can hear through. What are you doing to stop water pollution? To stop water pollution? Yeah. 
Okay. Again, part of that climate action plan, um, that will be a major component um, in terms of the environmental quality control measures, Peter. And before that time, I believe that Lincoln is really fortunate. We have a really strong uh, Lincoln Transportation and Utilities Department. And I thought this before I was on council, but there is an amazing water system, I believe in our city that has um, the ability to, and they're out there all the time testing our water quality. And I think Lincoln is so fortunate to maintain that all the time. We have engineers at our wastewater treatment systems. I went and toured it right away. Anyway, the engineers are always doing the quality testing at, at, a, at a level like that's another language. Um, and thankfully they, they've done it a long time. Um, our employees within that water system have, a, have longevity at their jobs and they've been doing this a long time. And I learned that right away by going out on a tour of our, our wastewater system. And it's one of the best in our country. And so it's, it's something that Lincoln can be really proud of. And, um, and that's where a lot of our resources go. So I think you should feel really assured that the pollution is something that's a top priority, not only for the council, but for our mayor. And we hear a lot about it. And so if you ever want a tour, let me know. I'm sure that that can be arranged. Um, it's very interesting. I think we have, yeah, I don't I think know we have time for time. one more question. One more question. Anyone want to volunteer? I'll pick. Okay, Isaac will go. Hi, Hi Isaac. What was the most difficult issue you faced on the council? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, okay. What was the most what's the most difficult issue you have faced on the city council? Oh, you know, I'd have to be really honest and say, um, I really, I really am, I am. What I worry, what keeps me up at night is our civil unrest. And I know that we'll get beyond COVID. I know that that will, that will adjust again, but I really, really want us to come together as a community and heal and move forward um, from all the divisiveness that I know we felt and you probably felt it at school and in your lives and in your families, because I, we have just got to figure out a way to meet in the middle again and, and not be divisive. So for me, that's the civil unrest that we've all experienced. And that's coming up on a year um, at the end of May when we had the riots in Lincoln. And um, I hope that we've learned a lot. I'm, I'm not sure that we're making the progress that we need to as a city. And that's what I worry about. And that's, I think, one of our biggest challenges. So, um, Somehow we've got to just, I know we can do it. I know we can do it. And the ch no challenges are too big for Lincoln to meet. And, and that's what I think is the hardest thing. So, Well, well I wanna say thank you to Councilwoman Ward. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, speak with uh, the class and uh, Mrs. Wisdom, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen in the class, I thank you. And we will uh, be seeing you sometime soon. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. We enjoyed it. Good. Thank you. Take care. Be you safe. Also.